My name is Rosie Goldsmith and I'm here to introduce you to the latest edition of the Goethe Institute's Doppelganger series. It's a great way to find out about the lives and work of Germans and Britons today. Each time we interview two people from the same profession in each country. Someone in the UK who's worked in Germany and a German who's worked in the same job in Britain. Our doppelganger focus today is doctors. How do their roles differ? And how does healthcare in the two countries differ? Germany has the oldest national health service in Europe, introduced by Otto von Bismarck in the early 1880s. The UK's National Health Service was founded in 1948, following the famous Beveridge Report. They're similar in many ways. They were both created as part of a greater welfare state to provide comprehensive and equal health care to everyone. But the way they're run is very different. And today, both the UK and German health services are going through massive reform, brought on by spiralling costs and ageing populations. So how are doctors in both countries reacting to these changes? Michael Kotrba is a German doctor working in Britain, specialising in orthopaedics and trauma. But what a journey he's had before joining the NHS 10 years ago. He studied and practised medicine in both parts of Germany, West and East, in Switzerland, in Australia, in Canada and in several cities in the UK. I've come to St Anthony's Hospital in Surrey to talk to him. Dr Kutruba, how did you come to work here in Britain? Well, after I finished my training in Germany, and I wanted to finish it in Germany despite doing a lot of travelling, because I wanted to have the European accreditation. And uh, I have done my first degree in England, and my A-levels. So, and I always was uh, very anglophilic. I always wanted to come back to England, or especially to London at some stage. And having worked uh, for five years as a facharzt, as a f uh, uh, qualified specialist um, at a teaching university hospital in Lübeck, I got a bit fed up with the bureaucracy and everything else around it. The bureaucracy meaning that you spend too much time, too much of your time in meetings, discussing improvements, signing letters, dealing with paperwork, instead of focusing on patient care. So when you arrived here, what did you see as a German doctor? What did you see as the main differences between the two health services? Well, what I like in this country is that it's a, it's more, it's a wider spectrum. Like, uh, for example, within a uh, orthopedic faculty, for example, which we have, you have various consultants specializing in a certain field. And uh, in Germany, there's more of a hierarchy in a way that you have more people doing good work, but there's one person on the top who then calls himself possibly chef arts or clinician director or clinical director or something like that, but uh, then is quite detached from the whole medical side of things and other people are doing it. Tell me about the positive aspects of the NHS. It does give you the opportunity to uh, treat all sorts of patients, of course it does. I think you have more autonomy as a consultant orthopaedic surgeon in this country, which is better. I think Germany has perfected having very few managers uh, doing an excellent job in uh, running hospitals, whereas here you have a lot of managers uh, running the hospital and uh, it may not be so efficient at the end of the day. And I think there's a huge difference between what we saw 10 years ago when I came here and the development in the NHS over the past three, four years. Do doctors make as much money here as they would in Germany? I think uh, we have to look at two aspects of this, NHS or private. I think the NHS, if we're looking at that, I think it's pretty much equivalent in both countries. Uh, if you look at the exchange rate, pounds to euro, which has got worse, you probably earn less money in this country now than what they earn in the equivalent position in Germany, uh, but I think at the end of the day it's on par with uh, whatever you get at the end of the year. Um, in looking at the private sector, uh, the private sector here in this country is better run, I think, uh, in, in, on parallel uh, with the NHS, because it's in separate hospitals, whereas in Germany it's always done in the same hospital, run through the, uh, which is the NHS hospital, or run by a private company or whatever. And uh, I think you have higher earnings in this country in the private sector uh, 
But you have to have higher earnings in the private sector because uh, my insurance, for example, for what the job I do here as a spine surgeon, the equivalent to my colleague, and I have, I'm in constant contact with my colleagues in Italy or in Germany, uh, would be paying, let's say, £6,000 or euros a year. Uh, in this country, you have to add another zero at the end of that, which has got completely out of hand, and we're getting American standards for this, and that is very bad. So you have to have an initial higher earning to be even able to pay for the insurance. How would you describe the status of doctors here in the UK compared with Germany? I think there might be more of a hierarchical status in Germany for a doctor. Uh, and especially if you're a consultant, that's, uh, that's something even more, where uh, maybe stems back to, uh, you know, history of how they approached it. So you're not here, professor, professor, doctor, doctor, and you're not wearing a white coat. No. I'm very disappointed. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. But in Germany, I would. I could even show you a few pictures where there is white coats and uh, white T-shirts even, you know, and the gold buttons on the white, white uh, coats as well. Yes. How would you describe the doctor-patient relationship here in the UK? I think it's quite relaxed. I would suggest that uh, the relationship between the doctors and patients in this country is probably uh, more relaxed than it is in Germany. Because here, once again, the hierarchical status is a bit different. I'm not saying that you're treated badly as a doctor, but why should you be? But you shouldn't treat anybody badly as such. It doesn't matter what, uh, what the background is. And, uh, and especially with the English language being a very relaxed language where you're on first name terms very quickly uh, with each other and with other people, um, I think that, makes, that breaks the ice much more easily. So I think the relationship between patients and, uh, and, and surgeons or, or, or doctors in general is probably more relaxed in this country than it is in Germany. Are people healthier here in the UK than they are in Germany? Looking at it... As an, uh, from an outside and the inside, I think l much less healthy than Germany. Why is that? Um, I think uh, a lot of people don't eat well in this country. They're much more into junk food than they are in Germany. I think uh, the alcohol intake in this country, I don't know if the statistics say it's the same, but I, it probably could be the same. But over there you grow up with having some alcohol, having a beer with your meal, even uh, in, the, in teenage years, and uh, you see very little of binge drinking, for example, to what you see in this country, which this country is uh, unfortunately so famous for, uh, in my opinion. And I think they are much healthier and much more uh, self-aware of uh, what they're doing in Germany than here. How do you as a doctor deal with the, the constant changes and often very dramatic changes in the NHS? It's very difficult. It's very difficult because um, sometimes you really get to a point, myself and my colleagues as well, and we are in this situation at the moment, that we can't do any justice to our patients anymore. And uh, that, that, that everything is breaking down around us. That we can't get the patients in because there is no beds. Everybody says, well, there is no beds. Well, of course there is no beds because we got rid of 50% of them. But there is no staff. Well, of course there's no staff. There's not enough sisters on the walls because you got rid of them. And, uh, you know, I still think once the, a patient manages to get through into the theatre after having waited for months to see the consultant, weeks to get another investigation, another so many months to get onto the op uh, where operating list or into theatre, I think once you're in theatre, you get a very good service. And I, I, I firmly believe that. You get a very good service. But it is a very difficult time to deal with that, with all the cutbacks. And I'm not quite sure where this is all going. And uh, I think we're dealing with 400,000 patients in Croydon, for example, and we should have approximately 16 consultants. Well, there is seven of us on call, uh, eight of us now with a locum, and a total of nine, where one of them is a locum, but only seven uh, or eight now doing on calls. And we're desperately fighting to get at least a few more consultants. And how do your German colleagues react to that? They think it's awful. But they do say, and one has to be very fair about this, we also have very similar problems. In Germany? In Germany. They're not the same problems. It's a different system. It's differently run. 
but we do also have similar problems in similar hospitals with bed closures, with not sufficient uh, doctors. They have a huge lack of doctors. They have a massive lack of doctors. And when I chose to change my own career in, 19, in 2004 to come to this country as a consultant from being a consultant there, I had to sign, I had to show them my signed contract from England because the Arbeitsamt, the employment office, would have had five other consultancies for me to offer me because they had no doctors. And now I have colleagues in Germany who are consultants running departments. They can't get any junior staff. It's coming, they're coming from Russia, from, uh, from Lebanon or anywhere, which I'm not saying they're bad doctors, but there's a language problem and uh, that is what we're facing in Germany at the moment. What's your prediction for the NHS? I don't know. I think a lot will depend on the next elections. But uh, because I think the NHS is always a very powerful tool in politics. And I think it always has been used as a powerful tool in politics. And um, More than in Germany? Yes. I would say so. Because in Germany you have this uh, insurance system, haven't you, of so many insurances. Whereas here the national health says, you know, everybody is entitled and it's all there for you, basically. And it's very centralised and, and it's very, very centralised, very political. So where are we going? I think we might end up at some stage having a basic insurance for everybody. And then everybody else has to look with an additional insurance after themselves possibly, for certain elective procedures, for seeing a doctor not as an emergency, and things like that, because somebody will have to subsidize it, I think, somewhere. It will not be, I don't think a country will be able to afford uh, health as it is to this stage. And I think we'll be then asking, do we want to pay more for health, but have sufficient sisters on the ward, have sufficient doctors taking care of patients, or are we going to cut back and back and back until there is a, well, we can just about afford that, but the patient care has gone down the drain, basically. Now, dream a little bit. If you could change one thing in the English NHS, what would it be? I would immediately increase the number of uh, nurses on the ward and uh, the numbers of doctors uh, seeing patients to, to, to shorten the times and to... Uh, take care of those patients in a very secure manner. And if you could change one thing in the German health service, what would that be? Uh, I would uh, adopt it more according to the system which is in the Anglo-Saxon countries, uh, with uh, more um, intercollegial cooperation, instead of, uh, which is actually happening, which is happening in many hospitals. And I think, I mean, my idea would be, which I would like to see, is which is happening in some trusts or in some hospitals where my consultant colleagues in Germany are running their units like that, that they know they have a certain amount of money per year. Put a figure on it, I don't know. Give me a million pounds. Give me a million pounds. And say, uh, you, will, you usually see the X amount of patients. You usually do this kind of surgery. And let the consultants take care of that to say, can I... Can I last with this million pounds for my implants, for my running costs of my theatre. Um, and you will start looking into cheaper implants. And I'm not saying that the cheaper implants are the answer, but you will at least start looking and saying, can I get the same quality for less? Okay, so Bismarck or beverage? And you can't do pieces of you both. You can't do pieces of both. <laughs> well, then let's take the beverage, because uh, everybody is more relaxed in that, I think. Dr. Kutrupa, thank you very much indeed. You're very welcome. It's been a pleasure.